Hello, everyone. Welcome, and thank you so much for joining us. The very first episode of Play Better Poker with Learn WPT. My name is Katie Stone, and I'm a Learn WPT instructor. And I'm joined today with our first episode with none other than poker giant Lucky Chewy Andrew Lichtenberger. Thank you so much for joining us for the very first show. Yeah, totally. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So you are the absolute perfect guest for the first show because, you know, the name of the show is Play Better Poker. Um, it's about learning how to play better poker, but it's it's really also about, you know, finding the methods that are good for you or for somebody else. Everybody learns in different ways. There's so many, you know, ways to learn poker. And there's also a lot that surrounds becoming a better poker player that's not exactly just limited to poker. Um, and so this is what the show is about, is about getting inside the minds of guys like this to understand what they do to prepare and get and you know get ready for these big events. Speaking of big events, <laughs> you just won a really big event, so congratulations are in order. Thank you. Uh, Chewy just won uh, one of the 25k high rollers that the um, took place at the Bellagio recently here in Las Vegas during the World Poker Tours Five Diamond World Poker Classic. First was for how much? It was 432. That's a pretty nice first place. It's hard to win Very first nice. in poker tournaments, you know? When you get dealt hands as good as I did, it's not as hard as it might ordinarily be. Yeah. I may have made a few good decisions along the way as well. But just a couple. Yes. <laughs> and you probably didn't have to get through any tough players either to no, win no, no. first, right? Like no tough players at all. Yeah, they all yeah. just rolled over and, and let yeah. me steamroll. <laughs> of course, of course. Well, one of the other really great reasons that, you know, you're so perfect for the show, you know, as the first, uh, the first, uh, you know, guest is because I think the entire world has, you know, the entire poker world has watched your career. And we all know that, you know, your, uh, your ascension has not been without a lot of uh, enthusiasm and joy for the game. And I think you're, you know, universally regarded as one of the most joyous individuals in poker, the laugh. Everybody knows the laugh, you know. I don't <laughs> think, I, I, I think there's, there are more grown individuals that, you know, love you as a person, I think more than any I've ever seen before. You know, there's just many, many, many people that, that really, truly love you. Um, and, you know, that, that's a really important side for, for people to see, I think, is, is the, the process and the enjoyment and just the, you know, just the pure love that you have for the game. Um, because, you know, you, as, as, as well as I, we understand that, you know, these things also spill over into our regular lives. And, and for a lot of people, especially for me, they kind of help put the pieces together um, in life. And so this is, you know, this is something I'm not sure if, if you've, uh, you know, experienced the same, you know, kind of merging of ideas, you know, ways that, you know, learning in poker can help you um, in other areas of your life. But at least, you know, that that's happened for me. And, and, and that's definitely um, what the show is about as well. So totally. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, I do prioritize joy both in poker and um, outside of poker mm -hmm. in my day-to-day -day life. And yeah, I mean, I really, uh, I, I would say it's a, it's a feature and not a bug of my existence that sure. I, you know, I do things that spark joy. Sure. And um, yeah, poker for me is just very much one of those things. I can play an entire day, come home enthusiastic to, you know, discuss some of the situations I had that were interesting, mm -hmm. talk with friends, 
uh, even maybe consume more poker content, mm. watch some streams, educational stuff, and uh, yeah, I just can't really get enough of it. I just find the the game and, and the deck of cards just endlessly fascinating, and all the situations that can arise, um, yeah, it just keeps me going. I truly just love it. Yeah. And, you know, as you, your career's been pretty long. So, uh, you know, when I first started playing poker, you were already, uh, you know, somebody who I, I, I had been hearing about, you know, so it's, it's been a long time. And I'm sure you've had to adjust your preparation methods, your study methods, the, the way you prepare. Players have gotten, you know, tougher. The game has, has changed quite a bit, you know, from yeah. the beginning of both of our careers, right? Totally. Um, what are some of the ways that you, you know, you, you just want a really big live tournament, but you're also a very prolific online player as well. What are some of the ways that you prepare for, let's say, you know, for example, one of those big live 25K high rollers where, you know, it's not tough players or anything like <laughs> that that you got to deal with? You know, what differences between an online or a live preparation, if any? Yeah, so I would say, um, you know, there's not a huge difference. Um, I might look at some situations like say the night before from just thinking about spots that might occur maybe the last time i played a similar format brush up on some ideas um you know typically the main difference you're going to face in a you know a high roller live tournament compared to some of the online tournaments is that people are going to be more aggressive slightly more creative taking more spots mm -hmm. pushing thinner edges um, so having a better understanding of how to play like turns and rivers in more intricate situations um, particularly when short stacked and such, uh, that can be really useful. Um, but day to day, like my preparation, whether I'm playing a regular online schedule or a live tournament, it's pretty similar. I get up, um, I have a meditation routine and do some breath work and kind of just center myself, get aligned, and yeah, then I'm ready to, to take on the day. And would you say that you kind of split your playing time with preparation time or about, you know, if you're, if you're spending X amount of hours playing, do you equate that with, okay, I have to spend X amount of hours preparing or studying or working on my game? Do you have any kind of any you know, requirement like that? Or are you more just, you know, looking at situations and engaging your community for, for help or, you know, for analysis? based on situations that arise? Yeah, I'm not too regimented really uh, with it all. I kind of just take it as it comes. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I can really get in a nice flow, studying, preparing, where one situation leads to another, um, that creative spark gets going, and then I'm just, you know, eight hours later, just deep in the woods. Yes. Uh, just, you know, figuring things out and learning a lot. Um, I would say it probably ends up being 50-50-ish, mm -hmm. but, yeah, can vary quite a bit in the short term. Yeah, I definitely enjoy kind of, uh, I, I call it jumping into my sleeping bag. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I know, like I know, it's a little weird. Um, no, jump, I know what you mean, though. It's like, it's a cocoon. Yeah, you're, you're, you're in your sleeping bag, I'm in my cocoon, you know, and 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 yeah, I'm right there with you. I, I call it going into my spaceship. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, that's a good one, too. I think yeah. I've kind of had Same that in idea. my Yeah, I think I've had that image in my head before, too, when I'm thinking about it. That's how um, it feels, though. You're kind of like yeah. taking a reprieve from the ordinary day-to-day -day going on yep. and you're just really locked in on the task. Yes, for sure. And I find also that when I'm able to, you know, I, I'm like you, when I, I'm not too regimented in my work. And these were questions, by the way, that were submitted uh, oh, cool. by LearnWPT members, which is cool. Um, I'm, I'm also not too regimented in my work. I definitely uh, am, you know, very joyous about poker as well. And so I, I kind of wait for, for when uh, you know, that mood, you know, and, and, and yeah. that sounds lazy, but it's really not. It actually occurs. No, because you can't fake it. And yeah. I've tried to force it at times. And sometimes like you're just better served doing some, like you, you, like really for me, my like overarching life philosophy is just do what sparks joy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that is studying poker. Sometimes it's playing poker. Sometimes it's not. And I've definitely played at times where I shouldn't have, mm -hmm. whether it was times where I should have been studying or just doing something outside to maintain that work-life balance. Yep. Um, yeah, you have to just be honest with yourself about what you're meant to be doing. Yep. Like what is your authentic expression in yep. that moment? Yeah. And also in 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 everything I've experienced all that too. I've also uh, I've kind of, you know, as I've gotten older, we're all getting older in poker here, you know, uh, as I've gotten older, I've also relaxed my expectations regarding that. So, because I understand that the more joyous that I am during that work session, the more I'm going to 
retain. The yeah, more get I'm more going, out of it. Exactly. Sure. And so um, I think that that's a, a really important, you know, when we when we uh, interact with students on LearnWPT.com and, you know, we talk to, you know, to feature Ask a Pro, you know, we get questions about, you know, when you should study, when you should stop playing. And um, I think that, uh, you know, joy being the key word here is, you know, when it feels when it feels fun to study, then study. If it doesn't feel fun to, to study and work on your game or, or plan your game, then, you know. Yeah, because end of the day, I mean, I would say. I mean, I, I can speak for myself, and I think most people got into poker because it's a game and it's fun, mm-hmm. and we enjoy playing. And yeah, if you can just maintain that throughout the duration of your time spent uh, being in the poker community, then I think you know that's kind of a win in and of itself. Yeah, and and the social aspect is really is really important too. You know, I, I think I also got into poker for that, but also you know knowing the social community of like minded people that you know I would be able to talk to about this game that I was, you know, I came from the chess world before poker, you know, so I had a lot to learn. Uh, and so the, the the poker community for me was just a, a, a very, you know, kind of open arms, you know, very, uh, really willing to, uh, you know, be creative and and just kind of think outside the box a little bit and and a little bit unrestrictive and you know that that I mean that's just always nice especially when you're meeting new friends and you're in a new game and totally um, um, I have a friend who recently transitioned from finance into poker and he's always um, expressing his gratitude for that general openness mm-hmm. that poker has relative to to other industries and other worlds yeah and I don't know if that's a thing like I mean I'm sure it's a thing out you know but. Yeah. For us, we're we're so used to it that it's it's maybe a little bit different for us when we look at other yeah industries. I've, I've always felt that it's because like as poker players, you know, you sort of share this unique experience that um, even if like chess is a good example, mm-hmm. it's hyper competitive. Um, You're in the trenches. Yeah, yeah. you spend a lot yeah. of time um, in your sleeping bag or in your spaceship in yep. chess, but it's just not quite the same, and you really can only relate to other poker players. Um, and I think that's kind of what often breeds that that um, community feel. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so, talk about your your community that you have now. Your your sense, you know, your your group of players that you interact with. You know, not by name or anything, obviously, but um, <laughs> you know, just about how they fit into your into your life and uh, the kinds of uh, ways that they that they help you. Because this is very important. It's really important to to make poker friends and surround yourself with you know, totally. nice yeah. people and good people. So, you know, how does, how do you interact with them and how do they, how does that all kind of work for? Yeah. I mean, I guess, uh, for me, um, probably a bit of an outlier in this regard because I've been in poker a long time mm-hmm. and, um, I've made a lot of friends. Yep. So I have a lot of, um, I have like a core group that, you know, we do a lot of, um, discussing of ideas and such on a more regular basis. But then I have a lot of, uh, people who I've just gone to know over the years and, uh, sometimes we'll discuss ideas with them and, and reach out uh, and just have enlightening discussions. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I've um, been very grateful to have built uh, as much of a, a network. network of nice. friends yeah. that I yeah. have over the years. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's just always fun, like, you know, when you see people at events and catch up and see how they're doing because, obviously, you know, poker spans the entire world. So mm-hmm. a lot of sure. people in other countries and so on. And it's such a, a wonderful activity that brings so many people together from so many different backgrounds. It's really amazing how, I mean, you can be sitting at the poker table, uh, you know, at a world poker tour event and you're, and you're sitting next to the guy who invented something you use every day, you know, or or something like that. And and then you talk to that person and they just found poker and now they're, you know, playing a main, you know, $3,500 main tour event, which is kind of cool. And then they see you and, you know, you're like their hero. And so (laughs) I've, I've learned a lot of great lessons at the table from people who, um, you know, might not excel at poker, but excel at other aspects of life. Sure. You know, from all walks of life, surgeons, attorneys, um, even some people in government, you know, it's, it's really interesting. So I get a lot of questions from, from people from outside poker, uh, at the poker table specifically about, you know, ways to improve in poker and get better. And, uh, I'm not sure what you, I'm not, maybe you get those questions from those people or not. I don't know. They might be too afraid to talk to you or not. You know, I don't know. No, no, no. Um, I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm not a guy to be afraid of. <laughs> you know, who knows? You look a little scary with the stripes. Right. Yes, uh, it's my tiger stripes. You know, but what are, you know, when, when, when players uh, come to me and then also through, uh, you know, uh, learnwpt.com, we get questions submitted, you know, what are some other ways to, to get better in poker? Because truly, you know, sometimes, you uh, 
you know, not one method works for every single person. You yeah. know, there really has to be lots of options for people. Everybody learns differently. Some people like to learn uh, in a solitary setting. Some mm -hmm. people like to learn in groups. Um, but my default response is generally, uh, you know, one, it's to find some poker friends, mm -hmm. you know, just to, so you can talk hands and stuff. Um, but really, truly, it's to, to get online, you know, start playing some online poker, get yeah. some get some hands in, you know, you get so many more hands when you're playing online than you do live, you're just, your learning is just going to be, you know, sped up a lot and you're going to just be able to retain a lot more. Plus you have the hand histories, you know, you've got the data, which is huge because, you know, live poker, oh, let's face it, you play those hands and sometimes you're like, oh, I'm going to remember and I'm going to, or I'm going to, you know, think about it and talk about it to somebody. And, you know, they just kind of tend to, to float away at okay. times. Yeah, if you're not on a TV table, they can definitely elude your times, yeah. the details. Yeah, so what are, um, is that something that you ever recommend to people, you know, playing online? You know, I, I see the benefits of, you know, being able to, to you know, retain your hands and, and being able to get more. What are some of the other ways that you think that, you know, playing online is good for, for new players? Yeah, um, I've often thought of it as like a batting practice mm -hmm. sort of thing. You can just get a lot of reps in. And um, yeah, you know, can can choose sort of what what level you're playing at, how much you want to challenge yourself, and uh, yeah, I mean, for me, like I kind of came up playing online mm -hmm. in many ways. I was a bit of a hybrid, played a lot of live uh, around the time that I was uh, getting into online poker. But yeah, I mean, I can't really say enough good things about yeah. it. It's given me so many opportunities, and a lot of my closer friends to this day I've met through. Um, the online poker community in its early days. So mm -hmm. yeah, I would just echo those sentiments. I think it's, you know, a fantastic way to both meet people and gain experience and uh, yeah, just improve. Yeah. And, um, you know, we can't, none of us can, uh, you know, forget the, uh, the, the 2003 boom, you know, right. that, that started, that really kind of helped put poker in a different a different space and and you are part of that and that obviously you know came from you know this was a, an online satellite winner you know this is um you know and that's that's another uh, another really important aspect of of online poker is the ability to play saddies you know live poker there's definitely opportunities to play saddies uh but online they're just much more prolific and and they're they they run much more frequently uh, you know, they, people can, you know, re-enter, you know, and totally. most, most times they can play, you know, every night. And you're pulling people from a lot of different jurisdictions, not just one local casino. Right. Or a few. Yeah. Right. Um, th this is, this is another, another thing that I, you know, recommend to people because, you know, playing, uh, playing smaller tournaments to help get you into the larger tournaments, especially if you're a new player, you might not have bankroll or the ability to play in a larger tournament. And, you know, playing the smaller tournaments in the satellites is also a really good experience and it teaches you and you're probably going to study it and you're, you're going to learn things that'll help you, you know, for other things. Uh, the other, the other, another really important part of um, playing online poker, I think, is um, you're able to start at a much lower buy-in. You mm -hmm. know, live is a little bit more expensive and, you know, online you can, you know, play as small as just, you know, a dollar or two or, um, you can also play different games, different variants that are not often offered in the live sector, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of online. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, just also I think it's just a nice, uh, it, it, it's just a nice way, like especially if you're a new player and you are a little bit uncomfortable and, you know, the mechanics of the poker game and you're in front of all these people and you might just be a little bit intimidated. Who knows? It's a new game. There's, there's nothing abnormal about that. I think it's nice to just be able to to sit home in your pajamas and and totally, yeah. make the mistakes that nobody's going to see. Convenience is king. It's it's definitely nice to be able to uh, just rock up to your computer and get some reps in. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Yeah. Um, so, what is your what are your plans for twenty twenty two? Do you have any more live poker plans? I think you do. Totally. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to play. Planning to crush. A, yes, definitely. I'm going to play a lot in twenty twenty two. I'm very excited. Obviously. Um, the tw 21 as a whole has been very uh, fortuitous for me, but yep. most recently, the you know uh, this stretch of of the last month or so has been awesome. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm just really excited to to keep getting after it. I um, yeah have a lot of passion right now for poker. Yeah. So and you live here in Vegas, so you'll be able to play a lot in Vegas totally. and lots of poker tournaments coming up. And um, you seem to to uh, 
enjoy making final tables at the Bellagio. <laughs> I really do. Yeah, it's a, it's a great experience. Would recommend it to everybody. <laughs> Chewy has made the five diamond final table I don't, four, three or four times. I don't know, three times, yes. Uh, in addition to uh, a WPT Alpha 8 win, which a few years ago, which was pretty cool. <laughs> Those wins are really nice. Um, you seem to do well on the World Poker Tour. Why do you think that is? Yeah, I mean, um, I... I do enjoy the brand. I think they're great. They run awesome events. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think they're they're pretty open to to change things as the industry evolves, and mm -hmm. I like seeing that. Um, but more specifically, Bellagio, like I've just played a lot there over the years, cash games and tournaments alike. And there's something nostalgic about it. I don't mm -hmm. know. I just like being there. I like playing. Yeah. And um, yeah, certainly it's uh, it's well, it's and the staff. You know, like we know yes. the staff and everything. Do you want to play a hand of poker? Sure. All Let's right. Do it. Let's play a hand of poker. Uh, you're gonna be the button, so I'm the button. We'll do blinds okay. or one and two. So, so we'll just play two card or three card. Oh, let's play two cards. Oh yeah, I should you should have dealt or whatever. So okay. oh, we have box card. Oh, we have two box cards. Oh well, we'll just stick them in the deck. <laughs> <laughs> so these are yeah, these are all the same kind of. Uh, we're deciding to. Uh, play a hand in the middle of our <laughs> of our show. Uh, so I'm going to raise here. So we're playing one-two blinds. Well, I'm going to raise. <laughs> nice hand. <laughs> um, yeah, hold on, hold on. Let's shuffle this deck a little bit more. Yeah. So what are some of the things that you see kind of as far as, um, you know, for players who are, looking to get into poker, new new players. So let's yeah. say you're a completely recreational player. Mm -hmm. um, you've, you know, you've just learned, you've just, let's say you've seen poker on TV. You've just, you know, said, oh, I think this is a really cool game. You know, I've seen somebody like Lucky Chewy. He's winning millions of dollars, you know. Um, what do you think is, in your opinion, a good, safe path for a new player to to begin their entry into poker? Would it be going into a casino to play a live event? Would it be, you know, maybe playing online uh, on Club WPT? You know, Club WPT is offered, I think, in 41 states. So for those of you who do have, uh, you know, online capability. Um, or would it, you know, be, you know, maybe watching, you know, content or stream or, or something like that? What would you kind of recommend for? Yeah, I think any or all of those are, are yep. great options. Um, Poker, you know, it, it's uh, not to overly harp on this, but it should be a friendly, enjoyable experience. Mm -hmm. So if you have access to a game and um, you have the desire to learn and uh, find out more about, uh, you know, what poker entails, then yeah, uh, any of those are great options. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, the, the online aspect is obviously more uh, accessible, mm -hmm. um, assuming you're in a place where you can play. Um, but it's it's nice also to to go meet people and have the the in person experience. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I did in my very first experiences playing poker, learn with friends, just playing home games after that poker boom, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I have some pretty fond memories of that. So I'm probably slightly biased uh, towards you know uh, learning in person and meeting people. And yeah, there's something there's something beautiful about the the cards and the chips and. Uh, I quite enjoy that. So. Yeah, yeah. I um I definitely enjoy the um, social aspect of poker, and I've made some of my best friends in this game. And I, I've I've actually, you know, I I mean I come from the chess world, but uh, the smartest people I've met in the world ha are poker players. Come from poker. It's uh you know it's it's pretty amazing. You know I mean I've I've been doing this for a long time. So I've kind of grown up also in the game. And like I yeah. said, it's, it's kind of helped me figure out a lot of things in life too, by using concepts that I learn here and then applying them into real life. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's something that, uh, it's just always amazes me how much more we have to learn. You know, do you ever feel like, stuck sometimes because there's just so much more you know there's just so much more that you don't know um i know what you're saying i wouldn't say i feel stuck but i do feel like i reach certain points of i guess evolution within poker mm -hmm. where um i i would say i progress to a certain point mm -hmm. 
and then I have a bit of a breakthrough. And how? What happens? Uh, usually I have some sort of aha moment or understanding. Mm -hmm. doesn't always directly coincide with success, but it often has um, some relation to it. Interesting. Because, yeah. you know, so many people, they the success and the immediate affirmation of, of the you know everything they're doing, they can make that correlation and then maybe stop doing what they're doing or you know, yeah. not understand that it's maybe do something else or... Yeah, you do have to kind of be willing to um, to ride the the wave of of life, and sometimes you know uh, fortunes on your side, and you know sometimes it's not. And uh, yeah, there's you know ways to I guess do what you can to um, assert your will over those situations. And there's you know sometimes just uh, the the macro structure of life is just going to take shape in whatever yep. way it does, and yep. you just kind of have to you know stick to the principles that you know, to be true. Yeah. And, yeah. And sometimes, yeah. like, I find myself getting stuck sometimes, too. And sometimes taking a step back, you know, taking a step away also, um, really helps me as well. I, I don't know why. Yes, you, I agree with that. You, like, anytime I take a break, even for just, like, a week, yep. come back with fresh eyes and just have more of a clarity about everything. Because if you're just playing every day, and studying a lot, it's just like too overwhelming. And um, I think this is even a technique in uh, you know that uh, college students are told, like mm -hmm. you know, take a break from studying for a little while, uh, just let your mind wander, do something else. I've had this experience in rock climbing too. Oh, like if I'm working on a particular route, um, and then I'll you know do nothing rock climbing related and come back, my subconscious will have figured it out in some way, and allows me to navigate it more easily. Oh, so interesting. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sure it's a thing that uh, uh, is existing in other uh, aspects of life. Yeah, your perspective kind of changes too because you get you get differing points of view and maybe it's just a, a simple, uh, I, mean, I don't know, maybe it's just simple more time and you just learn more in the interim and then you fit, figure out how to apply it. But I also feel like, uh, you know, when I, when I do get stuck and like when I, I take a break and then I come back, um, you know, just it's it, it's a little bit of a fresh set of eyes, you know, and, and, and sometimes, and I think this is something that a lot of players and, and uh, even, you know, full-time players don't do enough of, you know, they don't take enough time off and they don't take enough time to rest their yeah, brains. I would tend to agree, but different things do work for different people. Sure. But for me, I definitely need time. Uh, I can't just always be going, you know, 100 miles an hour. After sometimes, just yeah, relax, because so. you've got like a tournament schedule, right? So how do you, you know, we had a, a, a question from a Learn WPT member about how much time we play online, mm -hmm. um, and that's it's a really good question because you know we talked about balance, you know, balancing, uh, you know, the, just life and study and play and live. Um, before I decide what to do uh, to your 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 action right here, your three vote with my opening. By all means, take your time. What, <laughs> well, I'm still thinking about it. What are I mean? What are some of the ways that you? Because it is a really grueling schedule. First of all, I find it really difficult to play. I don't know about you. I find it really difficult to play both online and live at the same time. So if there's a live series going on and then there's also online stuff going on, I have a really hard time doing both. Even if mm. you know, even on off days. Um, and then I do have a, you know, I do kind of have a hard time finding, you know, to fit time in for, for work and study. So how do you do that? How do you plan your, your live work schedule, your live study schedule with your online schedule? Because everybody's always doing things. And how do you prioritize? You know, what's, yeah. what would you decide to do over another and why? Um, I don't, I do honestly don't really plan that much. Like I'll know, yeah. you know, okay, this series is coming up. I'm going to play this. But if the online schedule is good mm -hmm. in the interim and I have an off day, like I'll just fire that. Okay. I'll kind of just fit in study where I can. I really, um, you know, maybe, maybe it's a, a strength, um, ironically, but I, I really don't plan much at all. Mm -hmm. I kind of just go with no, the No, I think and, that's good. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think people can really take from that and understand. It doesn't that. work for everybody, though. True. Like, some people are quite They really need oriented. the regimented, you know. Yeah. yeah. For me, I almost can't have that. Like, it just doesn't work for me. Got it. Got I, it. I need to have the ability to just freely flow throughout my life and uh, 
Yeah, just do what feels right on any given day. Yeah, I think we're pretty similar in that respect. Um, I would assume this is somewhat common amongst poker players. Poker players, yeah. I mean, you yeah. can't really schedule that much. It's like, oh, it might be day five of this tournament. There's a $2 million guarantee down the street next week we're going. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I mean, that's what happens these days. You know, like poker tournaments, they just pop up and you never knew they were there. And, and Right, yeah. You know, now they're here. Yeah. Speaking of poker tournaments coming up, World Poker Tour, Lucky Hearts Poker Open is coming up in January. Are you going? Uh unsure um no I, let's go we're going yeah we're all uh, going team learn wpt we're all going to be there tony is going to be me, there I want to go. i'm going to be there i'm going to make an attempt to be there i have some other stuff going on we will see Time okay will tell. Right. i'm likely to no, be there he's going to be there i'm yeah. going to make sure he's all there right, well. um you guys though should also be there the world poker tour lucky hearts poker open uh of course at the hard rock seminole in southern florida is running in January, January 16th through the 27th, or the 28th, I think. Um, lots of really amazing prelims. The championship $3,500, $2 million guarantee starts on January 21st. And make sure to check worldpokertour.com for the schedule. There's also lots of saddies. Make sure you guys hit those saddies. I know I'll be in there, but they'll be on the schedule. Um, and yes, of course you're going to be there too. The entire, <laughs> the entire Learn WPT team will be there. I promise Chewy's going to be there, even though he says no. I didn't World say no. <laughs> well, even though he says maybe, yeah. Oh. <laughs> World Poker Tour, Matt Savage will be there. Tony Dunst will be there. Um, and you guys should come on out there too. And, and, and I hope that we, that we see you. Totally. Yeah. Well, Chewy, this has been a really amazing first show. Thank you so much for, yeah. for being here. This has really, truly been a great experience. It's been great. And... Is this how you get out of responding to my three bet? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. I'm going to shove. Okay, I fold. Okay. Well, <laughs> all right, that's the end of the hand. All right. Shouldn't have spoken out. <laughs> all right, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you, you know, uh, subscribe and stay tuned. We're going to be uh, coming to you guys live all throughout 2022, live here in Vegas, live out on the stops. You may even see Chewy. You know what? Chewy's coming back for the December show at the Bellagio Five Diamond because he's so used to winning those tournaments. So I'm just going to pre-book him now for the December 2022 show because I know you're going to have another big win. All right. It's pretty obvious. Sounds good to me. Um, and we'll see you guys in Florida at the Lucky Hearts Poker Open, January 16th through the 27th. My name is Katie Stone. This is Andrew Lichtenberger, Lucky Chewy. Go out there, play some online poker, play some live poker, have some fun, make some new friends. Happy New Year, and thank you so much for joining us. See you guys later.